Welcome to Stories from the Center of the Universe, the podcast about the human experience. Shannon of Muttley Crew Barbecue, welcome to the Center of the Universe. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We just met literally seconds ago. We did. And we're here in Urbana uh-huh. at a barbecue competition. There are, like, there are two competitions, one tomorrow and one Sunday. Are you competing in both? We're competing in everything. So actually there's the full competition on Saturday, full competition on Sunday, but then tonight we have a rib contest, a chicken contest, and a turkey contest. There's a lot going on. Yeah. And you're competing in everything. Everything. Is it because you just love chaos? Because that sounds pretty chaotic. Yeah, or I'm just totally insane. I don't, you choose. <laughs> All right, so for the novice uh, that doesn't know anything about barbecue competitions, yeah. what would you tell a novice? Yeah, so we compete in an organization called Kansas City Barbecue Society, so KCBS. And when we go to contest, we have to cook four categories. We have to cook chicken, pork ribs, pork, butts, uh, and brisket. And that's so that you can be eligible for grand champion. Um, so you have to cook these meats. You have to turn them in every half an hour. So chicken, ribs, pork, every half hour. And the challenge is, is to have your meat done. It tastes well. It tastes really good. It's hot when the judges get it um, while coordinating that whole timeline. And uh, it, it can be quite challenging, but I, we've done it so long now. It's kind of like riding a bike. <laughs> yeah. But um, it's a lot of fun. A lot of contests have festivals that are mixed in so a lot of people get to come out and see it do people's choice where we cook extra meat and then the the people judge our meat so um they really like it so it's it's fun it's a good time how'd you get into it so we cooked um a friend of ours was actually doing it and we just kind of joined them a couple weekends and we're like oh this is kind of fun and we end up just becoming part of that team so we cooked with that team for two years and then my husband and i decided just to break off and become our own team because It was just easier. Logistics were easier. Money was easier. You know, no bickering over any of those things. So um, we just went out on our own. We've been competing together since 2014. Okay. Yeah. And, and now you're kicking and butt. I'm, yeah, yeah, we're kicking. Well, we've been kicking butt for a little while. Um, so I'm the pit master, which makes us a little bit different because there's not too many females in, in KCBS that are actually the pit masters. KCBS, what's that? Kansas City Barbecue Society. <laughs> yeah. So it's the organization that we cook under. There's, there's several others, but that's just the one we do. And um, so, yeah, so it's a lot of fun and certainly challenging. Um, but we've been, like I said, really successful. We've done contests. So the regular person may not know the contests that are out there, but there's a contest in Kansas City. It's called American Roll. It's a World Series of Barbecue. So on one day, they'll have an invitational contest where they'll have about 150 teams. Mm. On the second day, they'll have an open contest. Over 500 teams show up, and they have it at the Kansas City Speedway. Um, it is a lot of fun, uh, lots of competition, and um, I've been lucky. Or my team has been lucky enough that we've pulled off first place ribs last year nice. at the Invitational. So we're world champion Congrats. right now. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> and also pork. So it, it's extremely hard to do just with the caliber of teams that are out there and then the numbers, right? You have to have a lot of luck going onto those tables with the judges, especially for the open because a lot of general public are the judges. And just to talk a little bit about that, the difference being that you and I, well, if I didn't have any experience in barbecue competitions, would just like that fall off the bone rib, you know, the the pork that's just, you know, just falling off everything. But with contests, when you have a rib, for example, there needs to be a slight tug. There needs to be differences with the meats. And so you have to cook it a different way than you would for the general public. Mm. The challenge being that when you're at a contest like the American Royal and they need 500 judges to compete, or I'm sorry, to uh, judge the meat, then who, what are you cooking for? Are you cooking for that normal judge? No, you're cooking for the general public at that point. Right. So it's you, you kind of got to tweak and change things a little bit. Wow. So, do you eat a lot of barbecue at home? No, no heck no. no. Uh, <laughs> um, I get totally sick of it. I mean, we have to try it every weekend or every contest because we got to make sure that the meat we're putting in the box is going to be what we want. Um, so no, in fact, I package it up and sell it to my coworkers. I have a spreadsheet of a list of people who buy from us, from me. So That's they awesome. love it <laughs> during the pan- <laughs> pandemic. They really loved it. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> so you're, are you traveling like every other weekend, every weekend? Pretty much. Um, we do about 30, 20, let's say 25 to 35 contests a year. Now, some of those are like this weekend where there's a double. So two in one weekend, yeah. but I would say easily 25 weekends out of the year did, we're on the road did you ask where, where you guys out of oh well, yeah he didn't ask we are in, from apex north carolina so apex, okay. if people aren't familiar with that it's right near raleigh 
Okay. Yeah. So part of the triangle. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Center yeah. center of North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. It's exactly perfectly much. center. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's the farthest you've traveled to compete? Um, I would guess so. Kansas City. Uh, if you go out west, probably down to almost the coast there, Alabama. So. Um, furthest south that's probably the furthest south because we've been in florida so we try to stay north carolina south carolina virginia west virginia georgia um and then we may go out to arkansas we may go out to kansas city but those are bigger trips obviously and the funny thing is um, my husband and i we don't work in food we don't have restaurants we don't have a food truck um i work in a a pharmaceutical company and my husband has a family business that does hvac (laughs) so So you um, both you have full-time jobs jobs. yeah and so when you're going out to Arkansas or mm-hmm. Kansas City, you're taking time off from work. Well, I, or working remotely. Uh, yeah. So he is taking time off for sure because he can't do yeah. except for phone calls. Um, but I'm able to work remotely. I have some flexibility there. So that helps. Yeah. What made you the pit master? She's um, the boss. I'm the boss, yeah. <laughs> if, if I'm to be honest, um, there was a contest called Fire and Ice, um, which was a women's contest. And my husband and I hadn't really ever talked about Pitmaster, what have you, but so I, um, I was the one that was always, you know, filling out the contest applications, things like that. And then we participate obviously more than 50% in the cook. So we just decided let's make me the Pitmaster. And, um, since then I've just grown in that, in that respect. But with the fire and ice contest, that was something that was looking directly at females. Um, cowboy charcoal sponsored it and, um, I ended up winning that at the World Food Championships down in Alabama. So um, what that consisted of is we had a KCBS part aspect of the contest. That was part of the score. The other one was where I cooked basically whatever I wanted to. And I ended up cooking a Wagyu steak um, with asparagus and some Hasselback potatoes and turned those in. And there was 10 women who were competing. And we had a time frame to do it all. And we turned it into the judges. And then whoever was the best won. And I won, but it was, um, I won by like six points, which was big because the time, the, I mean, the score, uh, whatever you call it, the levels were shorter. They weren't like a huge, so six points was pretty big. So that was exciting. Are you a natural at doing it or have you learned a lot of hard lessons? Along I think the way? I'm a natural. I think, you know, as I was growing up, um, we cooked out quite a bit, you know, um, I learned how to use the grill early on and, um, I think I'm just a natural and I definitely have expanded my skills with being in the KCBS competitions because there's just so much to learn here. There's so many different things to deal with times, obviously, um, but then the flavors. What do people like? Um, you know, one thing right now with, uh, with the contest is everybody likes really sweet food. Now, if you think about that from a population perspective, that's because everybody's so into sugar and things mm. like that. And your brain's obviously mm-hmm. going to tell you that's good when they take a bite and it's sweet. So um, just things like that that you wouldn't necessarily think about when you're at home cooking, you know, on a grill or what have you. So, um, definitely learned a lot. There's a lot of great talent out here. I've learned a lot from other people. Um, these are some of the best people you'll ever meet in the barbecue community. Um, when it comes down to it, if there's something going on, like you have an issue with your trailer, you have whatever, there's somebody there to help you and competition or not, you know, we always want everybody to do their best and it works. I mean, you're going to have some people that you're not going to fully get along with, but for the most part, everybody's great. And like it's just... Bill, like Bill Jones. <laughs> oh yeah, of course, Bill Jones. He's he's a rascal. <laughs> oh, man. So when you were young, what what was your favorite meal? Did it did it tie into this at all? Or... Well, honestly, my favorite meal was um, my my dad my dad and I. We cook ribs on the on the there grill, and so here we are, you know, wow. cooking one of the same meats. Um, we never did things like, you know, smoked and all that was mainly grill. Yeah. Um, so burgers, things like that. But I really loved the ribs. Yeah, well, you and me both. What, what is it about smoking meat that uh, is so tasty and appealing? Um, I just feel like the it's more of the time that you take to, to um, work with it. Now, if you're talking about competition meat, you're doing different things that you might do at home. So we'd use injections, we use rubs, you know, brines, all those kind of things. Um, I feel like the product is... It's just got that better flavor because you can get the smoke flavor on it. You've got you've taken the time to get that um, on the meat. You've also used all these other things, your injections, your rubs, your sauces. And it's just, and the moisture is just completely different than something that you might, you know, grill just at home. So, um, I, I don't know. I just, I think the smoke, the flavor just makes it completely different, stands out. What's your favorite part of the process of competing like this? Um... 
<laughs> being done. <laughs> um, you wouldn't do twenty five to thirty five. You year. know, I, I love. I'm competitive, um, and I I love to win. I love to do well. Um, I. I mean, it's just fun. It's so challenging in some ways. Yeah, you get used to your routine, but there's going to be that thing that happens during your cook where you have to be on your toes and figure out what you're going to do. You know, maybe you got distracted and your fire went out, and all of a sudden you're you're at a critical point in your timeline, Um, so you've got to scramble and figure something out. Um, Maybe you decided to bring your meat to the contest, and you open up the packaging, and you're meat's rotten you know oh, and does then, that ever happen yes oh my god so it did happen one time we were in Aiden North Carolina at a contest and I opened up the chicken <laughs> and I just about fell down it was really awful because you know when you've got bad meat um so of course I'd ask someone else because I was like please don't let this be happening but we ended up buying chicken down the road at a, at a grocery store and do you know we got first place chicken that day <laughs> <laughs> that's not supposed to happen that's not supposed to happen <laughs> wow but it does you well, know the guys in front of you just talked about the meat is very very important getting it, it from a butcher shop and if you're you're buying chicken off the shelf in that scenario we are so but we're actually buying pork and ribs from those guys you just <laughs> talked to uh-huh. um, and we get our briskets from Snake River Farms. So we're not buying the briskets at Costco and places like that. We're getting the high quality, you know, nice marbling, really good meat, um, Wagyu, of course, because you can't compete out here unless you have that high quality meat. Now the chicken, you have some latitude on. Now I do look for chicken that may be more, that's maybe organic or has not so much fat on the skin, things mm-hmm. like that, because we do scrape the skins um, and you just don't want a really fatty chicken yeah. um so yeah so even though i get it from the grocery store i'm still looking for the better quality meat right. there um but for the other parts yeah we're buying good stuff you get your chicken from food line this competition no. i got it from lowe's foods yes. <laughs> I love it. shout out to lowe's there even though they messed up my order <laughs> so, so, so you enjoy competition did you grow up competing in anything i did well i, was, I grew up playing sports so i played softball when i was young um and a little bit of soccer but mainly softball and just you know you just it's fun sports my dad was a referee too so i was always going to basketball games always going to football games um he breathed for both of those and uh so you know you're just always in sports at home on sundays we're listening to nascar you know it's everything so yeah i i enjoy the, the All winning right, so, losing. So, sorry go ahead no keep going uh since you're from north carolina i'm, I'm yeah. gonna ask this question sure unc or duke Neither. Go <laughs> Wolfpack, NC State. Yeah. NC State. Say, didn't you hear the Raleigh earlier? Uh, hello, I'm a graduate from NC State. <laughs> go Pack. Go. Go. Next time I ask that question, I need to include NC State and, and Wake Forest probably. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I mean, definitely NC State. I mean, <laughs> let's face it, Caroline wasn't even in the tournament this year. Mm-hmm. I know, and one of the two of us that uh, are on this podcast where we host it uh, is a huge UNC fan. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Not sorry. He should oh, good. he should he should feel really <laughs> bad about UNC. See my sister and brother in law they're UNC fans, so we have a dysfunctional family. No, I, I can only imagine. I I'm a uh, U- University of Virginia guy and my son oh, yeah. goes to Virginia Tech, my dad went oh, to Virginia Tech. It's yes. uh, it's kinda of brutal. You understand. Well, I understand losing football games to Virginia Tech every <laughs> single year. It's, it's awful. So do we. I'm, not, I'm not sure it's a rivalry anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So what's your puppy's name? This is Fozzie. Like Fozzie Bear from the Muppets. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, how old is Fozzie? He's about two years old. So, oh, he's yeah. still a puppy cunt. Yeah. So our team name is Muttley Crew Barbecue. At the time, we had seven dogs when we named our team. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. That's where it came from. Yeah. We're that type of family that dogs come to us. Um, I, me and my husband have been married uh, almost 20 years, and we have yet to have go out and get our own dog. They all come to us. Wow. So, Y'all are similar to my parents growing up. But yeah. Every stray dog came to our house. Yeah, they just know. They came to your dog. Yeah. Yeah, they're like, oh, yeah, the, the Gilmans will take that dog. Yeah, of course, of and, course. And sometimes we keep them permanently, and sometimes we, we yeah. find a, a new home. The same them. here, yeah. yeah. We're those people. Well, how are you, you feeling pretty good about this weekend? I think so. Uh, a little, like stressed about all the things we still need to take care of to yeah. get get tonight's cook done are we messing then, you up by being no with us? no you're good because my husband's actually still you're, at lunch you're, you're, yeah you might want to let shannon get back oh you're gonna let me go because it's yeah. time I, I well want you to, i don't want to mess we, up anything we definitely no, don't good. want to be the reason that you uh, yeah. don't win those no, podcasts because i'll find you guys yeah. <laughs> how many folks are competing or how many teams competing this um, weekend i'm not sure how many i think he's got over 50 maybe okay I guess. He took the sheet back, didn't he? Yeah, he did. He showed us all the, the Usually, the this sheet. is a pretty big contest. And there's, like, the, the team that was team of the year like, for KCBS last year is here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, cool. really good competition. And in fact, Charles, who you're going to talk to next, he's a real strong competitor. Awesome. How do you end up being the competitor of the year? 
Uh, you, so it's points. So um, when you're, if you basically need to win a lot of contests, got it, yeah, <laughs> um, and do really well and be consistent. But um, it's based on points, and then whoever has the highest points at the end of the year gets team of the year. Awesome. Well, Shannon, thank you so much for joining thank us. You. Thank you. Great to meet you. It was nice meeting you guys too. <laughs> Charles Cridlin, welcome to the Center of the Universe. Appreciate you joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks for coming down here to Urbana, Virginia. Urbana, we are definitely in Urbana. Absolutely. Uh, where did the name Wolf's Revenge come from? Uh, that name came from my godson. Before we were Wolf's Revenge, it was Big C's Stew and Q. And I had a shirt uh, with the logo on it, and it had um, uh, Wilma Flintstone on it, uh, holding up a rack of ribs. And, you know, in barbecue, there's a lot of double entendres, like with rub my racks and rub my butts and all that other stuff. So uh, Big C's uh, was uh, the name of my team because my name is Chiles. And anyway, I thought it was fitting. Well, we were in a church parking lot, and my goddaughters were running around with T-shirts on that said Big C's Stew and Q on it and Wilma Flintstone holding the ribs. And the mothers had an intervention with me. They pulled me aside and they said, Childs, we love this sport. We think it's family oriented, uh, but we are not going to have our daughters running around with T-shirts that say Big C's. <laughs> Fine. Understood. I looked at my godson. He was nine years old at the time. And I said, Reynolds, we got to come up with a new name. What is it going to be? He goes, we need something cool. We need something with a wolf, where the wolf gets his revenge. <laughs> and he said it just like that, and it was trademarked a week later. Oh, my goodness. That's awesome. Wow. That's a great story. That I is. love every bit of that story. Yeah, that was fantastic. So, and if you heard him tell it, he would tell you that this is where the brick house becomes a smokehouse and the wolf gets his revenge. There it is. Now, how old is he now? Uh, he is uh, turning 21 here in two months, wow. uh, uh, getting ready to graduate from VMI. Wow. Uh, so uh, he's uh, he's come a long way. Uh, he's probably <clears throat> uh, he's he's on a career path that I'm really excited about for him. Good, that's, that's great. Awesome. Now, did, did you grow up in Richmond? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, what, what part of town did you grow up in? Uh, so uh, born in Petersburg. Okay, uh, moved to Chesterfield, just south of Richmond, when I was 14. Went to VCU uh, right after high school graduation. And started my 10-year uh, career for a four-year degree, I guess. Uh, <clears throat> when you go to school at VCU, especially when you're involved in a fraternity, uh, nobody likes to go to the early classes because everybody has something to celebrate when you live in the fraternity house sure. every night. Uh, but anyway, no, I stuck with it. Uh, I was really involved in my fraternity at the time. And uh, I've been moving west from actually living on campus to moving a little further west uh, every year. So you're in Henrico? I'm in Henrico, yes. Okay. Cool. How'd you get in the barbecue? Somebody told me I couldn't. Oh, really? Like, is there more to that story? Yeah, this is actually a great segue. Uh, when I was hosting one of my fraternity, uh, uh, the graduate picnic, okay, <clears throat> uh, not the undergrads, but the ones for, uh, uh, for the uh, uh, graduates, the uh, undergrads were responsible for getting the smoker. And, you know, I had a big yard. I just moved in, into my neighborhood. I think this was probably, two, it was 2005. So since the uh, pledges un or no, the undergrads unfortunately dropped the ball, I had to come up with a cooker. Mm. Well, uh, there was a place right around the uh, corner from my house, and it was TD's Barbecue on Patterson Avenue. I don't mind mentioning it because it's part of the story. Uh, I went to uh, use his cooker. I went to, went to uh, rent it from him, and he said no. After talking to him to a little bit, he said, look, you're going to hurt somebody. You're going to kill somebody. You're going to make somebody sick. I am not going to let you uh, uh, rent this cooker. So... Uh, I pulled out my checkbook and I said, okay, that's a $3,000 cooker. I'll tell you what, I will buy it from you for $3,000. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you can buy it back from me for less later. How would that make you feel better about it? That way you don't have to worry about any liability. He still refused. So somebody ended up coming up with a front end of a Toyota Camry. Uh, it uh, was closed in at the bottom. Uh, you lifted the hood to uh, access where you put the meat. It was all welded up and, you know, of course it had a lot of air holes in it and still had the lights on the front. It uh, caught fire, overheated, uh, lights melted in my driveway, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, goodness, this is my first year in this neighborhood. Everybody's seeing this, and I've got a car on blocks on fire in the driveway. <laughs> now, the meat was already wrapped at that point, so uh, the food was still okay. Uh, but it led me to you know, somebody telling me that I can't do something. I started getting interested in barbecue. I was already doing Brunswick stew at the time. Things just happened to work out in 2006 where I was invited up to the Big Apple Barbecue uh, in uh, Madison Square Park. Mm. And they put me right between some guy named Chris Lilly with Big Bob Gibson and another guy named uh, Mike Mills from 17th Street. And here I am, I got my Brunswick stew pot and I'm stirring and I'm going back and forth and back and forth looking at all the things that uh, they're doing. And 
you know, the two things happening at the same time, somebody telling me I couldn't do it and watching these pros do it and just becoming mesmerized, it became a second career for me. Oh, wow. And you, when you say mesmerized, what, what exactly were you mesmerized uh, by? Awestruck. I mean, you know, here, here are these guys that, you know, you've seen on TV. Uh, you've heard their names, and you go out and you look at them online, and you see that they've won award after award after award, and they are, now I know them as influencers in the barbecue community, uh, ambassadors of the sport, if you will, for competition barbecue. So they didn't shun me. Uh, as a matter of fact, the second year I went to the Big Apple Barbecue with my Brunswick stew pot again, which, by the way, if you've ever driven down uh, Madison Avenue with a pickup truck pulling a trailer, it is a learning experience. In about 25 blocks, you'll figure out uh, that the taxi cabs will not pull out in front of you if you don't look like you're not going to stop. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, my, my hands were sweaty and shaking by the time I got to where I had to park. Anyway. Uh, back to uh, Mike Mills. So the next year, I think it was 2007, when I was at the Big Apple Barbecue, um, Mike Mills did a demo with his Ultra Q. Uh, it's an old hickory smoker. It's a small one. It uh, you know too small to use for a restaurant. Although some restaurants use them, especially for cooking wings. He did a crowd demo for it, and I was joking with him afterwards. And I said, "You don't want to take that back to Illinois." And he's like, "No, I don't." He had two guys pick it up and put it on the back of my stew trailer. Wow. So uh, I had to, I probably paid $100 for ratchet straps because that's what they go for in New York City when you're finding them at a hardwood store uh, to strap it to the back of the stew pot and uh, brought it home. I did get an invoice for it two weeks later, but it was a very nice price. Uh, it blew me away that all he knew was who I was, and he got my information from the organizer uh, to send me the bill. But uh, that was a huge leap of faith. Yeah. So man, I find that uh, you know that's kind of what you come to expect in the barbecue community. Yeah, that, that's what uh, the folks that recorded with us before you have been saying. It's a it's a community that loves uh, supporting each other. Yeah. yeah. They love competing too, but they they love supporting each other. Yeah. There's nothing better than taking credit for helping somebody else out. <laughs> No, well, it's a good feeling, for sure, when you get no, up it, it, it really is. Now, there's a lot of generosity in this group, a lot of generosity. How many competitions a year do you do? Anywhere from 25 to 35. It depends. It's a lot. It is. Uh, that's why I call it my second career. It's a little bit more than a side hustle. That's what some of my friends call it. Uh, it'll depend on, you know, I've got a day job. Uh, I work for the federal government helping manage data centers. So if I'm really busy there, I have to cut back a little bit. Yeah. If I'm not cooking very well, uh, as in, you know, we all go through, uh, you know, peaks and, you know, uh, down periods where, you know, something's a little off. You know, if, if, I'm, if I'm chasing points and I'm in the hunt for something like team of the year or a category of the year, then I'll, I'll load up my trailer and I'll find a competition in Nashville or Alabama or somewhere else, you know, just to try to, you know, gain those two, uh, those few more points. If I'm only having an okay year, I'll probably sit those long drives out. Yeah. Those are really long weekends. They can be. But is that a Friday to a Monday sort of thing? Uh, no, I've got to be back at work on Monday morning. Oh, my so gosh. It, <clears throat> we try to plan it. Uh, that uh, I've got a routine and the routine starts out with Sunday's cleaning the trailer from the week before Monday uh, is making sure that all the rubs and sauces are ready and uh, that the uh, I've got the chicken if I'm not trimming chicken on Monday Tuesday uh, is my night off I usually give myself one night that I could you know do something and not focus on barbecue uh, but by Wednesday I should have my brisket my chicken and possibly even my pork uh, uh, trimmed by that point if I've if everything else is going well and I'm on time for a, a single contest, this is a this is almost a triple. So this is an exception. But I, all I want to be able to do on Thursday night is make my injections, load the trailer, and get to bed at a decent time. Mm. It's a lot. How many how many pounds of meat are you going to cook uh, for these two competitions? Or right, actually, I guess they're more than two. Uh, you know what? I do not have. I, I don't know how much they weigh. Uh, I trim them to size. And I'm finding that, you know, the more consistent I cook, the smaller I can trim them. Mm. Uh, the smaller the meat is, the smaller your margin of error is. Uh, because if you get it overdone, you know, you're not going to find a piece way down in the bottom that's going to be perfect. I mean, it's a, you lose by having a smaller piece, but you also get more sleep. So there's a little bit of a trade-off. Uh, for an average competition, I will ch uh, do 12 chi chicken thighs, four racks of ribs, four pork butts, and one brisket. Four pork butts. That's a lot of pork. <laughs> yep, it is. Uh, it, it, and, and, you know, if I did my job right, and there's only, you know, one small section on each one of those that I'm going to want to turn in. Uh, just 
depends on the kind of cook that I have that day. I like the fact that I have choices. In this competition, especially Barbecue Gives Back, uh, I'm going to uh, pull those everything that's left. We're going to pan it up, and uh, we're going to uh, give it to the food bank uh, mm-hmm. that's going to collect it and make sure that it cools down and like it's supposed to for food safety. So, What's your best meat? <clears throat> you think it changes every year oh yeah uh last year i finished number two in chicken uh number two in the world according to kcbs the year before that i was number two in brisket and only one point behind uh, uh being team of the year for brisket um but uh, so that was two years ago last year i think i finished 37th in brisket or something so remember when i told you that you know you have your peaks and things yeah. go uh, judges, I found that judges' tastes don't change. Uh, us as cooks, we drift. You know, we might make one little small change here, and by the time we do it two or three times, it becomes habit. You know, mm-hmm. muscle memory or whatever you want to call it in your brain. So uh, we'll figure out after a few cooks what we've done wrong. We'll get back and we'll get it right again, and uh, you know, then another meat will drop. A uh, little interesting story. I was doing really well in chicken, and all of a sudden it just fell off. It just dropped off. I mean, it was like I couldn't get a chicken call to save my life, and the harder I worked, the more I concentrated on it, the worse my chicken scores got. You know, it's overthinking it, right? Well, I would swear, uh, I would put my hand on a Bible and tell you that I did not change a thing. I didn't change my timeline. I didn't change my temperature. I didn't change the chicken brand. I didn't change my rubs, my injection. I didn't change a thing. What I did change was I started cutting my pork butts smaller mm-hmm. so that they would finish faster. And what ended up being the problem uh, was that well, the pork butts are already out of the smoker and I'm not lifting and shutting the door, opening and closing the door, checking on chicken um, or while the chicken is in there because the pork butts are already out. So I was right. I didn't change anything with my chicken, but by making my pork butt smaller and the fact that I cook everything in the same cooker, if I'm not opening and closing that door, checking on the uh, temperature of those pork butts and checking them for doneness, uh, that uh, just by having the door closed, uh, pushed the chicken uh, higher, faster, uh, and created moisture loss. Yeah. The uh, the team, you have people that help you or are you... So- are you solo? Uh, no, I have a I have a very strong committed group. Uh, this weekend, I've got my friend Barry. He's from Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. Uh, he comes up and helps me with competitions that are Virginia, North Carolina, maybe West Virginia and South. Randy Grigg, he's from Henrico County too. Uh, he uh, cooks with me about once a month, and he's been with me since the very beginning. He was with me when we were back when we were Big C Stew and Q. So. That was 2007, you know, so he's been with me for quite a while. Uh, There's another gentleman, Chris Shriver. He's out of um, Pennsylvania, um, not Newcastle, Greencastle, Pennsylvania, excuse me. And he helps me with the competitions uh, that are mostly north of here. Mm. Uh, And uh, at any point in time, they'll all pitch in and jump in when we're doing a World Invitational, have a long drive or something like that, because that is one of the biggest challenges, the logistics of getting there. If I can't leave on Thursday, that means i got to leave at O-Dart 30 on Friday morning. Right. So having a couple people to help me drive... Uh, there's nothing I like better than sleeping in a truck uh, when, you know, you're driving, you know, six, seven, eight hours to South Carolina. I'll wake up when we get there. I'll be nice and refreshed. They'll be frustrated with me because I was snoring like a freight train, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, we You can't hear it. Nope. It all works out. Well, cool, Charles. Thank you so much uh, for joining us, and we wish you the best of luck this week and, and in future competitions. Hey, guys, I thank you very much for having me. Thank you. <laughs> This is Childs Cribbin with Wolf's Revenge Barbecue. We are here with the center of the universe, and I want to introduce you to Sid with good googly goo. I love saying that. He is one heck of a cook. Uh, he's a heck of a friend, too. And uh, get ready for some good stories. Uh, and uh, just remember that uh, never let the uh, truth get in the way of a good story. I love it. Thanks, Charles. Man, Charles. Appreciate good that. Good to see you, brother. Sid, uh, good to meet you. We just met, uh, what, tw- 20 seconds ago? That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you and Kevin have met each other. Yeah, we met a while we back. Did. Uh, did Towards the end of 22, uh, yes, 2022, it was. Yep. Uh, was that Rich Hanover? Hanover, Hanover yep. that's yep. right. All right, Sid, you, Kevin, and I know where good googly goo comes from mm-hmm. as a name, but mm-hmm. uh, would you explain it to f- folks that may not be uh, around a certain age? Where sure thing, from? My, my pleasure. Well, um, when I started cooking competition barbecue in 2018, 
I was um, looking for a name, something uh, that would be catchy and something people would remember. And uh, sometimes, you know, I learned back in business classes in school and stuff, you know, sometimes corny. <laughs> if you find something corny or what have you, people will remember that, you know. So I'm a big fan of Sanford and Son. Who's, and who's not when you're a certain age? Like, when you grew up with it, who's, just, who's not a fan? I think I just dated myself, right? No, it's all good. <laughs> but, you know, they run the reruns still to this day. <laughs> yeah, but, absolutely. But I'm a big fan of Sanford and Son. And uh, on the show, there was a character, uh, Grady. And uh, he was, that was Fred's best buddy. And uh, he used to always tell Fred, good, 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 good Fred. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it just always stuck with me. And uh I like the show, love the show, and uh, I say, hey, there it is, good googly goo barbecue. G- Grady was his best friend, but uh, Fred didn't always treat him like a best friend. He, that's right. <laughs> he didn't treat anybody. <laughs> yeah, like I was going to say, not even his son, Our, not Lamont. So I said, we're, we're going to start off with a question that I couldn't imagine we were going to ask coming into today. Sure. Kevin asked me this question. Uh, we do a sports podcast together. Okay. It's not this podcast. You want to ask him the uh, the octagon question that includes Fred oh, Sanford? I'm make sure <laughs> I remember who it was. Right, so you know who we, it was. we were putting. Um, Imagine an octagon match. Um, MMA. And, and my, uh, MMA. And my question was, th- a three-person a three person match, Fred Sanford, George Jefferson, and Archie Bunker. <laughs> who, who would win? Who would, who would survive the cage with those three in it? I tell you, the, the maddest one, I, I think that George Jefferson was one mad guy. But then, <laughs> hey, Archie Bunker, yeah, he, he had a little spice in him, you know, he, <laughs> And uh, he, he stirred up some stuff back in them days. Yes, know, he did. Uh, on and off camera, you know. <laughs> you know, but uh, I think those guys, they all eventually, uh, you know, got to know each other and became friends. Uh, yeah. Some of the, sh- some of the shows kind of interlap. Inter- you know, they did. Yeah. Interlapped a little bit. Well, I think so. George Jefferson, the Jeffersons came out of uh, Archie, Archie Bunker. Bunker. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, where are you from? I'm from born and raised Mitchellville, Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. Um, not too far from FedEx Field where the Washington Commanders play. Uh and uh, is that your team? That, that's my team. Yeah. Right. Born and raised. Uh, we're uh, sorry, we're sorry about that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've been hearing that for a number of years now. But you know, I remember the glory days. Yes. You know, and, and with the eighties and that. That's, that's right. That's right. My um, my father was a season ticket holder. He had three seats. Um, one for himself and two for my brother and I. And we started young at R- RFK Stadium. Uh, and he, you know, took us to, to the games as far as I can remember until his passing. And then my brother and I took over the seats, and uh, we've been fans ever since from, from RFK Stadium over to FedEx Field. So, big awesome. big fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah what, what was up with the RFK bleachers? I always thought they were going to come Well, we, come we were our, – our seats are three rows up from the field. So, we were right there in oh, that section to, that they to, showed on the TV. You didn't have to worry about it. We were out, no, we, we did. We, we, we were the ones that were shaking. We were in the elements. Oh, we gotcha, sat out gotcha. there in the snow, in the rain. But uh, when we got up and we sang and we – Chanted and what have you, though, and you know, those bleachers would just start shaking. We would be up there just, and they literally, literally shook. <laughs> it felt like it was moving about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. and um, you know, sometimes you can still you can find a clip, you know, sometime on 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 the, uh, YouTube or somewhere, but you'll see it, and that, that thing was just bouncing, and we were really into it, you know, especially those days, you know, going to the Super Bowl. And uh, I, I tell you, I, I miss those days, you know. And then having the parades afterwards, you yeah. know. Yeah, I, I was right there, you know, as a little, as a young person uh, to witness all that. But like you said, the Hogs and, you know, Art Monk and, you know, all those guys back in the day. And great teams. You, yeah, great, yeah. Daryl, yeah. Daryl Green. Daryl Green, yes, indeed. Yeah. Played 20 seasons. Yeah, Charles Mann, you know. <laughs> Dexter Mann. Riggins, you know, the Riggo, good old yeah. Riggo, yeah. yeah. All right, so when I think of barbecue, I think mm. of places like North Carolina, Kansas mm. City. I don't mm. think D.C. Metro. Sure. Yeah. How in the world did you get? in the barbecue competition <laughs> well um i started you know just doing a lot of grilling a lot of uh, direct live fire cooking in the backyard we had a pool in the backyard and we used to have cookouts and pool parties and uh, as i grew up i just enjoyed uh you know manning the grill you know cooking steaks burgers hot dogs things like that and then as i um, as life progressed uh, got a little older had kids you know wife and kids um i heard it this thing about smoking meat, you know, mm. well, yeah, I was like, well, what's the difference? A grill is a grill, you know. So I went down that rabbit hole and uh, found out, uh, you know, what it, what it was all about barbecuing, the true meaning of uh, barbecue, and you know, you're smoking those meats in direct heat, um, you know, low and slow at the time. And uh, I, I just just embraced it. Um, back then, we didn't have YouTube and and uh, Facebook and all that stuff. So I did a lot of learning. There were Facebook. I mean, uh, there were. Uh, you know, uh, forum websites that, you know, forums that you would find and go in there, post questions and things like that. And I uh, started off, you know, went to Lowe's or Home Depot, one of the box stores and bought a little cheap smoker and 
tried to do something and it was a disaster that first time but you know that that just you know inspired me to you know go down that rabbit hole and, and try to perfect uh, the food so from there it just took off and um fat that was early 2000s fast forward to 2018 and, you know kids are grown and i'm sitting around doing nothing but watching tv all day on saturday and uh barbecue pitmasters was running uh, all day they were running marathons and that's how i got in, got the bug for competition barbecue wow. back in 2018 what do you enjoy about the competitions uh, i love the people i i, I you know i've met you know uh, mr charles Cridlin who, who uh, just introduced me um i met him through barbecue you see people that, that you probably would have never met if it wasn't for competition barbecue and not only that the uh the locations that we travel to uh, for these contests um some of these little towns we go to wise virginia um places in north carolina i, I we just went down to Florida. Uh, we opened up the season this year with a, a five competition tour. We went down to Georgia, North Carolina, um, and Florida. And, uh, you know, it's just in little towns, you know, not your major cities. I'm not talking Atlanta or Miami or whatever. Right. These, you know, uh, Winter, Winter Haven and Lake Wells, Florida, Lakeland, Florida, and, uh, um, you know, places in North Carolina. So it's the lo- to answer your question, it's the location, the places that I probably would have never gone or yeah. experienced in my life. And then when you go there, um, these small towns, you know, we always look for little restaurants to, uh, you know, local local uh, eateries and what have you to patron and uh, patronize. And uh, it's, it's just, you know, being able to travel. And uh, I just uh, recently um, got, got married, well, second marriage, got married last year on Cinco de Mayo. And uh, my wife, we got married at a barbecue contest. <laughs> and we were in uh, Montgomery, Alabama for that okay. uh, PUSIQ. And uh, she's, since she's come on board, she's uh, taken the team to a new level. And uh, we just love traveling together. She's here with me. Uh, she would have been here for the podcast, but she's in there getting everything set up on the inside. And, we hope we're not messing you up. No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I knew you guys were going to be here. And, I, 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 you know, they asked me, and I said, I'm, I'm there. Just, just say when. <laughs> well, when. When we saw the name of your team or the, or, or the entity that is uh, you. Sure. We like we have to have him on. If we don't get anybody else on, that's fine. We have to have good, good, good. Well, and plus I met you. That's right. You were such a nice guy. Sure. I mean, Thank I you. Sir. It nobody. still is. Right. <laughs> Thank you. No, Thank not you. anyone. No, no. <laughs> and you tasted that chicken that I made. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your it was family. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. And, Thank and, you. And, I, and the name. Uh, yeah, you're right, Paul. We have to have him on. I mean, it yeah. takes us back to our childhood. It yeah. does. <laughs> well, the childhood and last weekend. When, <laughs> what? Like said, yeah, right. The marathon was yeah, running yeah. on TV. Oh, you can in middle of the night. You can turn the channel. Absolutely, you can. Sanford and Son still holds up today. Mm, yeah, yeah. I th- I don't if I, one of my kids who are they're, they're teenagers or early twenties. Mm. If they watch it, I I don't know that they would know what to do with it. They, I, well, I, they don't get it. My yeah. no, my no. son who's uh, he's twenty nine, pushing thirty, and uh, he watches. He, he just it's not funny to know, you know. But I, I sit there to this day. I, I can watch the reruns, right? You know, over and over and, and over, and I'm laughing. still laughing like I've never seen it before. You know, so um, you know it's it's there's a lot of shows like that. But you know, I, I don't know if it, I don't these this this uh, these millennials what they're they're a whole different different breed these days. So, they are. Yeah. They Millennials are, are definitely a different breed. Yeah. All right, so if you said, hey, this is the one thing that I do best, what is the one thing that you do best in terms of meat? Uh, when, it, when it comes to competition barbecue, um, I, I've kind of developed a reputation for chicken. Yeah. Um, I think right now we're uh, number we're ranked number one in the KCBS Team of the Year for chicken. Come on now. Yeah, That's awesome. Uh, we, uh, we finished last year in eighth, the year before in fourth place yeah and then 13th place the year before that so been in the top 10 and uh, finished in kcbs uh, team of the year uh points race uh in chicken um this year um we've got a nice you know like i said first place chicken so far um it's kind of still early in the season but um, i'm kind of surprised that my brisket is coming around i'm actually uh, ranked number one or number two in brisket mm. uh right now so but like i said it's early some of the teams haven't cooked yet so we'll see what happens uh you know as the season progresses and uh you know come come check me out you know towards the end of the year and see where we are but chicken chicken is my thing so we have uh teams that compete we have judges mm. do other folks come to these things well, well it depends um some locations they do have a public aspect uh of the, of the uh, competition and those are the good ones because you you know they, they come out they walk around they'll have vendors and they can you know buy barbecue and you know try and sometimes they'll have a people's choice uh, category where all the uh, competition teams will submit a pork in- entry and they, they'll give them all samples of different teams and they can judge so it makes the public feel like they're you know involved with the competition and so you enjoy those more i i, I enjoy it I, I like when the when the uh you know the, when we have the public out there you know and uh, you know, as long as they're not messing with us when we're in, the, in our zone with that doing those cook turn in times right. uh, i'm fine with it you know they'll stop by and ask questions 
um, a lot of them they just see the name on the trail and they just love it. <laughs> they, they they love the name. Yeah, you know, so they'll stop by and you know talk. So you know, it's just, that's another thing. You know, people that you'd never see or meet. Yeah, you know, there they are. So have you ever seen someone have, pardon the pun, beef with a judge? <laughs> Um, it, you know, it, it happens a lot, and, and we see it a lot on, on Facebook, or, you know, in, in a lot of the uh, groups, barbecue groups and things, people after a competition, uh, people, will, you know, just don't, ha- they just don't agree with the scores that they received, and they'll go in there, and, and not a particular judge, but, you know, because it, it is a, a blind uh, right. judging t- type format, so we don't necessarily know who did, but we do get comment cards, and uh, we get to see our score sheets after the uh, contest, and a lot of people, you know, you know myself included. Sometimes we just feel like you know, we didn't get what we deserved, but that's competition barbecue. Yeah. Um, it's a very sub- it's a very subjective uh, yeah. food sport. You know what, what you might like, uh, your chicken to taste like. You know might be different from you know what you like. So um, everybody, you know, some some like sweet, some like heat. You know, like it spicy. You know, uh, some people just want it right down the road, middle of the road. You know, so it's hard to please every judge. You right. Know? So one of the things we do try to do in competition barbecue is just try to put it right down the middle. You know, and uh, you know give them. Uh, we like to say the very best average barbecue that you can put in yeah. the, in that box. That's what we like to turn in because uh, I think you give yourself a better chance. It's a good at, strategy. At mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. Uh, how, how many people on your team? Uh, it's just two. Um, just you and your just, wife. Just my wife and I. Sometimes my brother and his wife will come out uh, when I can get my son and my daughter. You know, they're older. You know, in their late twenties. You know, they, they don't have time to come hang out with the dad. <laughs> you know? But um, they, they, they'll come. They, they may come down because it's kind of close. They may come come down this weekend. But yeah, it's, it's just the two of it's always the two of us uh, doing it. And and that's that started two years ago. At first, I was a solo cook team. Uh, starting in 2018, That's be I, hard. I used to do. It's very hard. I was just telling child, I'm tired already. We haven't <laughs> even cooked the meat yet. <laughs> you know, but the setup, the preparation. You know, it, it starts long before we get here. You know, uh, prepping our prepping our meats and getting everything packed in the trailer. So. Um, didn't get much sleep last night because you know this, and probably won't tonight because it gets to a point where you you know you're just anxious, right. and it, the adrenaline is, is is rushing, flowing through your body, and uh, it's just hard to get good sleep. So, um, but you know after the competition, you, you you're pretty beat. <laughs> you, you, yeah. Does does the weather affect what you're doing? It, it, it affects me big time because I cook on uh, what we call drum cookers. Um, and uh, or, or cans. Some people refer to them as cans, but uh, you know they're basically 55 gallon drums uh, with with a heat source, a charcoal basket down in the bottom. And sometimes if the wind uh, mm. is pretty strong, you know I may have to move my drums around to so it doesn't affect the you know blow through the smoker and, and you know affect my fire. And you know if if it's a cold day or a windy day, I'm, I'm, it's going to take some more fuel to you know to keep that temperature where where we want it. Um, you know, if it's raining, I do have an awning on my trailer, so I will move my drums up under the awning to, you know, so I'm not out in, out in the elements as much. But uh, you have some of these guys; they have these clo- big, uh, fifty thousand, eighty thousand dollar rigs out here, you know, and their their stuff's covered, or they're cooking on on a patio on the back. So, <laughs> you know, you know, they, they, so there's this there's sort of an advantage there, you know, um, because. Once that rain co- starts coming down, you know, not, not only am I fighting trying to make good barbecue, but, but now I'm trying to fight, you know, the elements, fight yeah. the weather. So, it, 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 you know, but there's so many different aspects to this. To this, uh, I, I like to call it a food sport because it is a sport. You know, I'm, I'm I'm getting up there in age, so I'm you know I'm long past my football day playing football playing days but uh yeah I, I love the competitive nature of it you know and this gives me a chance to to compete you know see, a lot of people say stop taking this serious, so serious but you know it's just that competitive nature you don't you know? get to number one in chicken without it, being serious you got that absolutely. right you got that right and when you put the type of money into this into this thing you know you, you want to win you want to have something to show for it absolutely. so so i that, that is one of the motivating motivating factors you know so i'm not an expert i'm learning a ton today sure thing. about I'm, this but how do you go from 2018 being inspired by mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. to actually to be a number one in a, in a category like that well it, you know that was just one of those rabbit holes i went down i, I started watching videos on youtube of certain people who are you know beginning to post stuff out there on social media um then you, you know just just like anything you know to get better at it you just got to you know keep practicing so you went all in i went all in i bought the cookers and uh i did the contest and you know my first contest i went out there after thinking that i was ready and i realized i wasn't ready when i saw the results you know because uh i you know 
if, if I'm cooking for you or cooking for my family or friends, people coming over to the house, they're going to love my barbecue. But with the, with a lot of people don't realize with this competition barbecue, these are certified judges who have been uh, trained to look for certain things, you know, in, in the, uh, turn, the the entries that we turn in. So, and I, you know, I knew it to a certain extent, but when I turned it in and I saw those results, I, I, I found out I really didn't know what I was doing when it came to competition barbecue. Mm. And at that point, I told myself, you know, that this, this can't happen again. And I went down that hole and started studying. I took a few classes. Um, that, that's, that's a game changer right there uh, to take a class. And uh, it, it really uh, you know, puts a big dent in that learning curve uh, when you take those classes. And, and ever since then, 2018, I, I um, did a few contests. And, I, you know, I, the bug was there, you know, because I, I, it was, that was that competitive nature in me, right? right. So now I feel like I got to get out there and, and do what's necessary to win. Uh, you know, went out there next year, did a number of contests and uh, took some classes. And, and once, it, once I took the first class, it really uh, opened my eyes and I started seeing results. And um, from there, um, it, the following year, of course, COVID jumped in there. Um, but I was one of those folks that uh, jumped out there on the road still, uh, you know, with my fingers crossed and, and, and still competed during those cases. There were a few contests. It, it was uh, pretty uh, limiting during that time. You know, they, they had certain safeguards in place. You know, you had to wear your mask and had gloves on and things like that, you know. But uh, we, we, we made, you know, made our, found, found our way through that and uh, cooked through COVID. And now here I am, I think, to, what, two years removed from COVID and uh, – here I am back down here. Uh, this is one of the first contests that I did um, when, I, when I jumped into competition barbecue. And, and uh, one, of the, one of the meat categories, I was actually, we were, I got my first uh, DQ disqualification uh, because we were late with our turn in. And I told myself I would never let that happen again. So You, you got the watch on. Yeah, I got the watch you know, on. That's yeah. right. And when they told me, oh, you got to do an interview, I said, okay, what time are we doing? Let me know. <laughs> and uh, so, it, so, But, but it, it worked out, you know, and, and I haven't been disqualified since then, knock on wood. But, um, you know, it's it's just a fun sport, and it gives me something to do as I get older. Um, I'm approaching tr- uh, retirement with my my day job, They're the one that pays the bills and la- allows me to come out here. And, uh, and when I hit that, I do want to you know do some concessions and vending and that catering type, that type of thing. Yeah. So, so I think I've kind of uh, maybe set some kind of a name for myself, uh, you know, from this competition barbecue. Uh, your skills, you think it was a big part of the reason your wife married you? <laughs> well, it, it's funny because she was going through a phase where she was a vegetarian for a while. <laughs> and I used to tell myself, I can never marry a vegetarian. <laughs> you know, <laughs> all this meat in here, all this pork in here. But, but uh, it, it worked out. And uh, she, she loves it. She loves my food. And she loves spreading the word about my food. Her friends, you know, she let them taste it. And they, they, they become fans instantly and, and customers as well. So, yeah, she, but she, that's, that's my ride or die. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, said, thank you so much for doing this. And thank you. Uh, good luck this weekend thank you very much for having me and uh you, you guys hang around you feel feel free to stop by and come get some barbecue <laughs> oh, watch out, <laughs> right. I'm, I'm gonna take you up all right guys <laughs> john jason welcome to the center of the universe appreciate you uh joining us here on the podcast Absolutely. thanks for having us yeah man uh you guys are optimist swine correct we're optimist swine williamsburg virginia competition <laughs> barbecue team where's the name come from uh well we're 80s kids mm. and uh nerds, nerds. We're nerds. <laughs> wait, 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 define nerd in this case. Oh, man, we were growing up. It was cart- Saturday morning cartoons, G.I. Joe, action figures, uh, you know, all that stuff. Nostalgia, it just hung out, hung with us, and we thought it was a cool name. It's a great name. Yeah. It's an awesome name. Something fun. Something I mean, op- up conversation. Optimus Prime uh, has some staying power. He's still a kind of a, That's it. a big thing now. He's That's the it. man, the OG. Is there any uh, connection between Transformers and what you guys do, or you just love the name? The, the connection is that um, I have an 11-year-old son. Um, he's coming out later today to cook with us. He's doing our, our kids' queue. Cooking. Okay. And so it was fun to have him involved in it, and he... Our old team name was Two Drummers Q Crew. My brother and I are restaurant owners. Okay. And our restaurant's called Two Drummers Smokehouse. So we thought brand expansion, let's use our name. Yeah. And it just wasn't fun. We weren't having fun. Uh-huh. So we thought, how far can we go and how much fun can we have with the name? And uh, making a robot pig was kind of what we <laughs> in the, at the awesome. end of the day. Okay, very cool. Yeah. You have a, a logo? So we have a logo. It's a, it's here on our on our gear. It's also on our Facebook okay. page, you know, Optimus awesome. Wine. 757 is the attached number for our area code where we're 
Got, are are y'all old enough to remember Williamsburg having an 804? 804. I sure do. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I remember not understanding why it had to happen. That we, that we changed to a 7.5. Too many people and not yeah, enough numbers it. to go around. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's cool. How would you guys get into the barbecue competition? And your brothers, like a lot of brothers fight. Right. You guys do this on the weekend and, and your restaurant owners together during the – well, all, all week long. You guys want to kill each other sometimes when, you, when you're doing this? And let me go back to the original question. How did you guys get into it? Well, we uh, we started out um, in the Colonial Williamsburg Fife and Drum Corps when we were kids, and we started. We were you know little drummer boys for Colonial Williamsburg, and uh, we both wanted to be rock and roll stars. Uh, however, uh, that wasn't necessarily in the cards. So we had to, we had to do some real uh, some real work and restaurant work. Uh, supplemental pay supplemental say. pay you know so starving artist john went on to do a bunch of uh a bunch of drumming but uh for the most part we got right into restaurant work and so uh it was an easy transition for us to think barbecue was cool yeah. and and uh let's be honest who doesn't want to be in the backyard drinking some beers and having fun with with the boys yep and so anyway uh we just transitioned right into into, into barbecue so yeah and and being brothers and being in the trailer and, and having to support 50 person staff um yeah it does it, you do get to a point where you're like oh, i just want to strangle this guy and then you and then you realize <laughs> wait this is professional this has nothing to do with family and mm. so we regularly have to take off one hat and put on another one just just to get through the day but it, it's easy for us to do we've been we've not been a, partners in crime for 40 years now we have our moments i was gonna say not everybody can do it though separate the professional right from it, the family it, so that's good good for you guys yeah it takes energy and, and you have to want it so, Absolutely. I, I don't know anybody else who I'd rather be out here, deal, you know, putting out fires and, and starting fires. So you guys are really an us versus a, a, a two individuals. Correct. Yeah, yep. that's, that's, the, that's the only way to be. Well, you sure got a little more uh, when you when you got somebody to back you up. You're you're in good shape. So, yeah. so uh, who's the more precise brother out of the two of you? And who's more artistic? That John is very much more precise, for sure. He's a very uh, detail-oriented guy. You know, having ADHD and <laughs> deficit has been an advantage. I can appreciate that. You know, <laughs> I've had to come up with a lot of coping me- mechanisms and, and staying to a form format, um, sticking to a routine has really helped me kind of get through life and try to be suc- and, and to have success. So routine, does routine mean you follow a specific recipe or are you guys ad-libbing a little bit as you uh, we, do your thing? Yeah, yeah. So I, the idea is to tweak play and, and and still have culinary uh, fun but at the same time we know at this time um, a chemical reaction has to start at this time in order for it to finish and yeah. so a lot of what we do is a chemical reaction and um, so it's a timeline everything when we pull on site the clock starts gotcha you know so yesterday we, we pulled in Thursday at noon we like to get here early get in place make sure we're not fighting for a parking spot make sure we know where we're parking and then we can get to work so you had this planned to join us for 15 20 minutes today was that part of the schedule <laughs> that's part of the schedule you're on the we're, not, we're not messing you all up no, no. Clock, okay no. you're on the wall all right so what's the key to making great barbecue without giving away any secrets you guys have uh repetition hard work um, not, uh, not being afraid to make a mistake, get behind it, uh, and uh, being able to own up to mistakes and, and learn from them and, and get better. Yeah, and improvise. <clears throat> being able to tuck and roll or whatever you got to do, and something happens that you didn't expect to happen, how are you going to react? You know, mm-hmm. the number one thing my brother and I say to each other it's not how you act, it's how you react. Yeah. How are we going to react to this? And, you know, another situation where we don't kill each other. You know, how do we <laughs> react to this? Yeah. Let's yeah. think about this. This takes a lot of effort. Um, what's your favorite part of the process? Uh, that's it's hard to say. We we actually love the um, the stress of being under the gun and having to perform. Um, the the competition adds to that, and and so we really enjoy being in those pressure uh, cooker situations. And so uh, for us, when we get out here, we pull into town, and you see, you know some of the best cooks in the country lined up and down next door to you it's like okay it's time to concentrate and we we we, we thrive on that is there a part of the process you don't really like 
uh, cleaning up. <laughs> I was going to say, that's, that's got to like, be it. It just sucks. Yeah, I mean, you're just beat to a pulp. And... But you don't think about it until you get to that part of the process, right? You're not sweating it as you're you're doing your thing prior to cleanup. No, and you try to do, we're restaurateurs. We know the, the clean up and get out process really well. You start as soon as you can. Yeah. yeah. You know that this thing isn't going to get used again for the rest of the day. Start cleaning it up. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's All great. right, I got a question. When you're younger... I don't know who's older and how much older. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm five years older. Jay, Jason older. is five years old. Yeah. So when you're twelve, what was your favorite meal? <laughs> well, we have a running joke in our family. Our mom. Hopefully, mom doesn't listen. Yeah, to hopefully, life. mom. <laughs> sorry in advance, but she had two meals. It was spaghetti or chicken, and so <laughs> Wait a for minute, uh, all kinds of chicken or specific kinds. It of chicken? was pretty much. Um, Chicken casseroles, yeah, um, chicken casseroles. Lot. and and so kind of hamburger helper, but with chicken. Okay, we, we exactly. started cooking right away because we knew if we wanted to eat something that was was a decent meal that we were going to have to provide. So when I was twelve, I'm, this is John. I'm the younger brother. Yep. When I was twelve, my favorite meal was anything this dude over here was going to. Oh, okay. And Jason was off running start with the culinary thing as a fifteen year old. Wow. Um, he joined like the uh, what was it called the. Well, I was I when I I started at like twelve in Boy Scouts. I everybody was doing their uh, fishing merit badges and everything, and all I cared about was was cooking the the camp meal for the night, and I, I just loved it. Cooking would, over the fire. He would draw out these little diagrams of a chuck box. Yeah, and he would say, "I'm going to put this the dry ingredients here, and I'm going to put like over here. I'll have my tools." And he's, you know, he's 12. We told you, nerds, man. Nerds. Oh, it's awesome. culinary nerds. <laughs> but it sounds like out of necessity, you, you started cooking at a pretty young age. <laughs> we did. We did. Eating good food. Yeah. You're five years younger, so it sounds like it was more inspiration of your older brother that got you into it. You know, I think any kid um, with an older brother really has a second role model in their life, you know? And so um, our dad is a musician. Um, he had a, a restaurant movie theater back in the 90s and Jason was cooking in there and he was like 12 or 13 in the kitchen and I was like 7 and I was the concessionaire I was making popcorn selling soda and um, you know we just kind of like always had our hands in food and I've always seen what he was capable of and I've always wanted to do you know when you have that second role model or somebody you can look up to you go I want to be able to do what they do and so by design I kind of go a little further and see how much further I can push it Mm -hmm. because my brother did it like this. Maybe I can do it like this. And it's been like that for everything. I mean, drumming, uh, cooking. Um, That's actually the only two things we've ever done (laughs) in our lives. I'll stop there. Do you guys still drum? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Both of you? Um, Here and there. He he still plays professionally with jazz groups, with rock and roll groups. Um, every once in a while, we'll break out our colonial drums and go down and relive the glory, glory days, you know. But We're alumni of the Colonial Williamsburg Fife and Drum Corps, okay. which still musters a couple times a year. Oh, of course whatever, they do. It's a proud tradition, reason. right? Yeah, for whatever yeah. reason. It might be a Christmas. Uh, it might be the Grand Illumination. It might be an anniversary. We just get together. We muster. We march. And a lot of these guys own their own stuff. Um, my brother and I were able to meet uh, Dave Loyal, who creates these drums and makes these rope drums currently. Mm. He made them for the, uh, the New England Patriots Fife and Drum Corps. He makes them for the uh, United States uh, Old Guard yeah, Army yeah. Corps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a lot of friends in the Old Guard, and so we'll get together and we'll jam you know, yeah. with these war That's drums. Cool. And so every now and again, we get to get that out, which is really cool, because talk about repetition, talk about routine. Those those tunes are memorized. Yeah. We memorized them when we were 10 we got out of the court when we were 18. We, we ran a routine, and that's yeah. what we did. All right, so y'all are, y'all have a restaurant. You're, yep. You're competing how many weekends a year? Uh, 20 to 30. It's a lot. And you're you're drumming, and I imagine both of you have other hobbies we haven't talked about or other things you, you enjoy. Walk me through this week. What were y'all doing Sunday through uh, tomorrow? Well, we uh, – so Sunday, you know, we were running the, the restaurant and the butcher shop – and we got through business, and then at the end of the day, we go, okay, here's the checklist that we need to get done on Sunday in order that we meet our timeline to be here this weekend. So Sunday, we knock out a few things. John's grabbing chicken. He's grabbing uh, ingredients from the grocery store. Then on, on Monday, the, 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 we go back to work in the morning. 
he he usually handles the restaurant i'll handle the butcher shop and we go and we uh we knock out a day's work and then back back to the competition barbecue okay do a few hours mm. so each night we try to knock a little off it is it is an advantage to us as restaurateurs and especially butcher shop owners um one of the things when you asked earlier what's what makes barbecue what's the best what can you do to create good barbecue good meat mm. You can go to the grocery store and buy the wimpiest piece of meat and go home and give it the love of its life and try to treat it the best you can and it's just not going to ever perform as well as the best meat that you can get. So I think, you know, he's at the butcher shop during the day. He's like, John, you know, uh, what are our orders? We also provide meat for a lot of these teams. You know, mm. You're going to talk to one later, uh, good, good Googly Goo. Sid is one of our customers or one of he our guys. He gets meat from you. He gets his ribs from us. Yep. Um, we're... We're basically retailers for a company called Prairie Fresh. Um, they're the up-and-coming pork producer in the United States. Um, their competition has moved. They're taking over very well, and they're very involved in the barbecue, uh, the competition barbecue world. Um, a lot of teams around here, you're going to see Prairie Fresh flags flying, shirts, hats. They, they, they will deck us out. And um, so anyway, we provide a lot of these teams with that meat. And when they win with that meat. They can go on social media, they can go on the Prairie Fresh website and say, hey, we just won first place pork, here's a picture of it. And Prairie Fresh will put it all over the internet, share it on their social media, you know, really expand yeah, yeah. the process. So he's at work, he's touching this Prairie Fresh uh, product. I'm out at the restaurant, I'm cooking. We're constantly working on what's gonna happen this week, even at work. So That's you guys don't slow down. Never, never. It sound like it. So never. That would be boring. When I was a kid, my, my sixth grade science teacher was also a butcher. And he was a butcher at the U-Crops. You guys are have heard cool. of U-Crops yeah. from the Richmond metro area. Um, there aren't any butcher shops around, really. How many butcher shops are in Williamsburg, as an example? It's us. Isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah. Well, we opened it out of necessity. COVID hit. People were having a hard time going to the grocery store. The chicken section's bought out. Done. You know, here we are at the restaurant. No problem getting chicken. So we just called up and said, hey, uh, is there a place around town that we could kind of go in and start selling some meats post-COVID? And it was like people have been waiting for it their whole life. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's bizarre. And I know that one of the main problems with the butchery business is that um, meats are so expensive. You cannot afford to let any go to waste. And... <clears throat> Uh, on meats, you've got one to two days. So John and I have an, an advantage that most butcher shops don't have. We have a restaurant. We can move the product quickly. And so a, a freestanding butcher shop, it's almost impossible to, to stay viable because uh, if you want to be competitive at all with your pricing, you're going to have to uh, offer a, a, a low cost. So anyway, uh, it's difficult for a freestanding butcher shop to make it without being able to move all that product. And you guys have every kind of meat imaginable, or is it really focused on uh, beef and um, got everything? Everything, yeah. E even extravagant. Yeah, we have uh, we have um, ground bison, ground elk. Oh wow! Uh, bison ribeyes, um, you know, veal shortbreads, all kinds of stuff. Shop, you know, so we yeah. take a, we'll take a rack of chuck ribs and butcher them into chuck tomahawks. Nice. You know, we'll make something that you just go home and cook. You don't have to do any knife work. Well, John and Jason, I feel really close to you guys, and I love butcher shops. <laughs> and I'm in Williamsburg a fair yeah. amount, so yes, I'm, I'm just with Paul Gilman with uh, one, Paul, one Paul Gilman, oh, right. Yes. Writing it down right now. <laughs> cool. Well, we're at time. Thanks so much. Good Absolutely, luck this weekend. Man. Thank yeah, you, fellas. You guys Absolutely, crush it. Great Thank you. Great meeting you. Yeah, Good great luck. meeting you guys. Thank Good you. Good luck. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thank you for listening. If you enjoy this episode, please subscribe to wherever you listen to podcasts. We'd also really appreciate if you'd rate and review us. You can find us at scodopodcast.com.